the iPod, a device which transformed the landscape of portable media by doing the same thing other MP3 players were doing, but this time it was super hashtag trendy and aesthetic. Yeah, it's no secret that the thing Apple is good at is making tech into jewelry, but I'm all about sleek and hashtag trendy, even if the cost is high. While Apple products are good at doing what they do, it's always been known they don't play games. Whether it's running new games on a Mac, emulating games on an iPhone, or whatever the f this is. Many believe games just aren't Apple's strong suit. To which I say, you're a fake gamer. You can't play Parachute on your $3,000 gaming PC. I don't care about how many graphics you have. For a bit, Apple actually supported purchasable games on iTunes to play on the iPod, with all its clicks and wheels. So let's take a look at these games and why you can't really play them anymore. But first, if you want a not so outdated way to enjoy great content, check out today's sponsor, Verve, by going to vrv.co slash abilium. I've talked about Verve to no end on this channel, and that's something I'm happy about because it's a service I use a lot. Being available on a wide variety of streaming devices and having a great selection of curated channels such as Nick Splat, Boomerang, and Crunchyroll, Verve is my go-to place to see something interesting. Because you can watch content offline using Verve's offline sync feature, I've been watching a lot of stuff on Verve's Boomerang channel while I'm at the gym. I just watched a few episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog and I always forget how unsettling but genuinely funny this show can be. If you want a great episode to revisit or to go back and watch for the first time, I strongly recommend Cajun Granny Stew. It's just non-stop gags and it's honestly hilarious, which has not been so good for for me trying to do controlled breathing while at the gym. So if you want to check out Boomerang and more, try out Verve Premium by going to vrv.co slash billium. And thank you again to Verve for sponsoring this video. In October 2006, Apple released a revision to their fifth generation iPod, which would later be dubbed the iPod Classic. Retroactively, the fifth gen iPod is the first iPod to really feel modern. It has a full color screen, got rid of that rounded fat design, and finally supported video playback. Alongside this revision, Apple also updated iTunes to support the download of new games for the iPod. While this was the first time you could download games for your iPod, previous versions of the iPod had a version of Breakout included as an Easter egg, which of course was originally developed by Apple's co-founder, Steve Wozniak. I'm actually looking at the camera screen right now. I can't tell if this is better or worse. I wish I could get like a little remote for the, uh... oh, that was worse. Later, the iPod would include a few more games. A music quiz, which tests your knowledge of your music library. So any of you who downloaded 40 ounces to freedom because you wanted to hear what the album based on your favorite t-shirt sounded like, you could experience gatekeeping from your very own iPod. There was solitaire. And finally, Parachute. All right, where are we at next? Parachute, holy sh Game of the year edition. This game has you operating a sort of turreted gun as men in helicopters drop down. You gotta shoot them before they hit the ground. Hit the helicopter for extra points. Wow, fun, very good. I feel like these games work really well with the quick wheel. There are so few controls needed to play them properly, so it works well. Come on, ooh, am I getting two helicopters in a row? I did. Pro gamer over here. From 2006 to 2009, about 50 additional games were released on iTunes. However, it's nearly impossible to get access to them now as the interest to crack all of these games and unlock their DRM has kind of faded. And those who did crack the games back in the day missed a few key titles, including CSI Miami and the most underrated trilogy of games ever, SAT Prep 2008 Math, Reading, and Not Even Writing. Where are your priorities? By the time interest died out, only about 16 of the 50 games were cracked. So my selection of games is dependent on what is available. I did try to find iPods online with games already on them, but it's not a search term people think to add when listing an iPod for sale. It's not like my Xbox 360 here that has the Scott Pilgrim game and all the DLC on it because that's the only thing important about it. New game, AAA, check. All right, let's start this off a little slow and take a look at some puzzle games. My initial thought was this would be the best genre to port to the iPod OS because most puzzle games don't need a lot of controls, but playing Tetris as my first game didn't give me much hope. This is where I came across problem number one. 
during games, you can't actually click any of the buttons except for the center select button. Since the click wheel is technically a touch device, simply touching in a direction will indicate what you're intending on doing. They program these games this way because the music controls are still tied to the actual buttons. So both controls need to be available. While this isn't a deal breaker, it does make the controls less intuitive. And I swear just tapping is way less reliable. The control selection for Tetris feels so odd. While scrolling on the wheel moves the pieces from left to right, center slams the piece all the way down to the bottom. I figured that'd be the best button to actually rotate the block, but I ended up pressing it by accident over and over again. Got it. Great. A new record. My instincts tell me that rotating the wheel will move it, center will rotate, and down will move it all the way to the bottom. Sure, I could most likely get used to this alternate strange control scheme, but in the year 2019, I could play Tetris on anything. I could play Tetris on the screen of this food scale. And here we have Bejeweled. A simple enough concept. You match three of a kind jewels and watch them disappear. Now, Bejeweled plays on a grid, so you have to swap jewels around to match them up. The, the scroll, the scroll wheel moves, oh my God, that's such a hard word to say. The scroll wheel moves from left to right and will move up or down once you reach the end of a row. It works quite well with the click wheel. That is way better. I just wish you could move directly up or down easier. Cubist 2, this is one of the launch games for the iPod and I actually like it quite a bit, which is great because I haven't heard of it until now. Not to be confused with Cubix. I have no idea what this is. It's Cubist 2. Unlike many puzzle games, Cubist takes place in a 3D environment. You have to match three of a kind by shooting blocks forward from one of two sides. Regular blocks will settle next to an existing block, slanted blocks will go under existing blocks, and the orb will change the colors of surrounding blocks. It's quite fun and definitely feels different than most puzzle games. While I'm not going to get into the abundance of card games like Poker, Solitaire, and Texas Hold'em on the iPod, I will say there were a series of basic games that you would expect to find on an airplane in 2003. Digital versions of board games and other odd puzzle games and a weird collection of spin-off games based on The Sims. Bull now, enter your name. I wonder what my name is. Ah! Like Sims Pool. Sims Bowling and Sims DJ. Of course, all of these have pre-made Sims and feature very little Simlish, so it's missing that woohooing charm. However, my generic mini game of choice will always be mini golf. Tommy Totem's Tiki Putt Putt. Tommy Totem's Tiki Putt Putt. For some reason, I'm a big sucker for mini golf games. I don't know what it is, but even when I'm playing this on the iPod, it's super fun. Oh, a windmill! even if I don't do too well. We're gonna do a little Wamu technique and hit it off the side. Bam, hole in two. You know what they say, I'm definitely not the best. Besides puzzle games being ported, a series of spin-offs and ports were also brought to the iPod. Bomberman, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, and Sonic the Hedgehog of all things. I can't imagine Sonic played well on the iPod. I really wish I could give it a try, but judging from the other games that require quick reactions, I cannot imagine it ran well. This is where not being able to actually press buttons becomes super annoying. In a game like Pac-Man, you're constantly moving and the entire control scheme of the game is dependent on being able to turn around a corner at the exact right microsecond. So not being able to do that changes the feeling of the game completely. Round three, baby. Fuck this game, baby. Now, Pac-Man does play a little bit better than this Pac-Man just because it runs a little slower, but it's not significantly better. All right, here we got something interesting. Lost, a top-down adventure game based on the hit TV show, Lost. It's kind of like Twin Peaks, but on an island, and the abstractness comes from a lack of planning rather than a stylistic intent. Hashtag hot takes in 2010. There's a pregnant woman by the wing. I'll be fine here, go get her. Who's pregnant? Claire's pregnant. Uh, okay. Claire, where are you? I'm gonna take your baby. I'd be interested to play this game if it were on something like the Game Boy Advance or the DS, but here the same problems come up. The controls are just a pain in the butt. Now there are a bunch of games I wish I could try out like Pole Position, Tamagotchi, Round the World, and what many people consider to be the best game of the library, Phase. It's an adaptive rhythm game made by Harmonix that used your music library. But once again, most of the library is just unavailable to play. These games being unavailable is just another reminder 
here for why it's important to develop some sort of database to make sure these games remain in existence and maybe one day become playable again. I mean, my Xbox can't be the world's sole owner of the Scott Pilgrim game. However, the Scott Pilgrim game has an army of people demanding its return. We'll get it again eventually. These games don't have that kind of interest, which is why it's imperative to create infrastructure for official digital preservation. It's not difficult at all to determine why these games faded into obscurity. Problem number two. Apparently, it was really difficult to develop for the iPod, so not many games became playable. With an install base as large as the iPod had, you expect more software to be released. Furthermore, the window of time in which these were available was super short. Although they remained on iTunes until 2011, they were only compatible with four iPod models, all released within two years. Furthermore, the games became available in 2006. The iPhone and iPod Touch were released the following year, which made iOS Apple's mobile platform of choice, and all models of iPod that followed used some version of it. Except the iPod Classic, and the final model of that release didn't support these games either. Furthermore, even if you owned these games and you upgraded your iPod to another compatible model, you'd have to buy the games again as your license was tied to a device, not to your iTunes account. So comment question time. What was your favorite mobile game before smartphones existed? There's a lot out there that just isn't available anymore. What do you remember? What did you like? Just comment down below. Also give this video a like, please. When these games were taken off of iTunes, there wasn't a mass panic. There was just a mass of people who said, wait, you could download games for your iPod? And since then, there hasn't really been a lot of effort to preserve these games. And I think part of the reason why is because most of them just aren't any good. Please calm down. I said most of them. Now, if you excuse me, I am going to go perform my civic duty and raise awareness for an important cause. Release the game, you cowards! Anyways, thank you for watching this video. If this is your first video of mine, go check out some of my other stuff. And just a reminder, this video was sponsored by Verve, so if you want a 30-day free trial of Verve Premium, click the link in the description down below or go to vrv.co slash billion. Other than that, you can follow me on social media. Have a good day, and I will see you uh, next time I upload.